Hi, everybody. Mike Beer here with the Sunday DRF race of the day. Belmont at the Big A. Race number eight is the grade one frisette for two-year-old fillies. They're going to go a one-turn mile on the main track. The purse is $400,000, and we'll be right back with the full preview of this race after this brief message. Want to view free formulator pass performances for this race? Head to the Race of the Day page at DRF.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the Daily Racing Form YouTube channel and bet this card with DRF Bets. Here is the field uh, for that grade one for that again, race number eight um, at Aqueduct on Saturday, uh, on Sunday, rather, afternoon, October the 2nd. Um, Well-matched field here of seven enters. You can see there from the entry card, um, clear-cut morning line favorite in the number four, Chocolate Gelato, Todd Pletcher, Irad Ortiz. She's nine to five on the line, and um, Chocolate Gelato is exiting a really, really impressive maiden win uh, back in the middle of August, sprinting at Saratoga. That was her second career start. She did lose first time out at a very short price, um, but really took a big step forward in breaking her maiden last time. And um, I think it's pretty clear, even though that there there, it, there appears to be some real uh, talent and some real potential in this grade one for Zet, um, Chocolate Gelato is, is going to be very, very tough to beat if she runs back. Um, to that uh, maiden win last time where she, you know, just came in fast time and a very impressive performance right on the front end. We'll see if, um, you know, if that running style is going to be, you know, what it takes for her to be at her best going forward. I suppose if that is the case, it could be maybe a little bit of an issue here. We'll take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector um, where they have the number six, another uh, very impressive uh, maiden winner at Saratoga sprinting number six, the great maybe. They have her out on the uh, early lead. She did show very, very good speed from the rail um, and defeating a pretty big field uh, at the end of that Saratoga meet back on August 28th. I expect her to be going forward in here as they stretch out to a mile chocolate gelato. The four is also expected to be up close to this pace. Um, and we'll see if, again, if uh, that running style is what she needs to be effective uh, going forward. It, it'd be hard to believe if that was the case, but it's certainly possible. Number seven, You're My Girl, a New York bred, also off of a really impressive blowout maiden win up at Saratoga. She could be forward in this race. I think there is plenty of speed in here. Time for U.S. has the red bar up there. Um, they're thinking this is going to be run at a fast pace, and it's pretty hard to disagree with that if it is run at a fast pace. Uh, I suppose that could help the number one, Leave No Trace, who is clearly one of the major contenders in this race. Leave No Trace, two for two to begin her career. Both of those wins pretty impress in pretty impressive fashion at Saratoga. She won first time out um, just from a stalking position. She got out of the gate very well in that race, but she was very handy um, for Irad Ortiz, who was riding that day, kept up close on the outside, just sort of tracking the leaders. Um, came up to challenge them in the stretch and then quickly overwhelmed them to get away. That was an impressive performance. She came right back at the end of the meet with this performance. We'll take a look at the replay right now of the grade one spin away. That's right. Leave no trace already a grade one winner. She came right back um, off of that maiden win, stretched out to seven furlongs and just sort of set a similar trip. Got out of the gate very, very well, sat on the outside while showing plenty of speed, um, but not, you know, uh, apparently needing to be um, right up front to be effective. Um, took over at the top of the stretch, as you see there, as a rival came through to her inside and, um, you know, dueled that horse briefly. But at the end of the day, Leave No Trace was just much the best in this grade one spin away. She's clear at the end. It's only a 76 buyer. Um, she's probably going to have to run faster than that as she stretches out another mile here. I think it's also, you know, at least worth pointing out that at um, that Saratoga meet, Phil, trainer Phil Serpy just um, was sending out nothing but live horses. Um, he went six for 16 at that meet. We'll see if he can keep that momentum going um, now as racing shifts downstate. Um, this horse, though, um, there's really nothing to knock about Leave No Trace. Yes, she's facing a couple of horses um, in this uh, grade one race that have run faster than she has, but she has two races of experience. She's run really well in both of them. She's got a handy running style from the rail. There's plenty to like here, and she's nine to two on the morning line. The number two American Rocket was also in that spinaway that we just looked at. If you, uh, you know, watched it to the end, you would have seen her just failing to get up uh, for third at the end of that race, and she did all that after what was just basically a disastrous start for her. She broke from post 10 um, on the far outside in that spinaway and just bolted to the outside um, and once the gates opened. She was actually all the way at the outer rail early. She lost tons of position there, had to sit last. After that, Junior Alvarado just sort of did everything right. He let her, you know, work her way back into the race. He did not rush her and did not ask her to do too much. And when they came to the stretch, um, he wheeled her to the outside. And this filly put in a really strong finish to just miss third at the end. That's a replay that's worth going back and watching in its entirety just to see, you know, what happened there with American Rockette. Um, her career debut was also a good performance, winning from well off the pace in a race that was rained off the turf. She was entered for turf that day, but... 
This is a dirt pedigree on the dam side. She ran really well breaking her maiden in a race that's probably better than it looks even um, while coming off the turf. And she ran a super underrated race at the grade one spin away. We'll see what kind of price she is. And I don't think she's the kind of horse I would want um, to take, you know, too short a price on. And there's a chance she gets bet in here just because I think, you know, most everybody saw the trouble that she had in the spin away last time. But um, I think American Rocket is a horse that you could um, certainly use um, in this uh, grade one for Zed. I, I do think she's going to be able to handle this one turn mile. The three is Raging C. I think this horse is mildly interesting here. The things to like about her is obviously she's well connected. Um, she did run well winning first time out. It's a, it's a debut win going seven furlongs, which is not easy to do. And it was, while it was more of a game performance than anything else, she just sort of sat in behind the leaders, kept right up close the entire way, sat in behind, managed to come through, split horses in the stretch, then came through on the inside and prevailed in the very late stages with a 74 buyer. I thought she did a lot of good things in that race, and she also has the pedigree to just continue to get better um, with more distance and with more time. She's by Curlin. These horses just get better when they stretch out. This is the female family of the great AP Indy. So you think she's going to get better with more distance? They're going to step her right up here to the one-turn mile in the frisette. I think those are all positives. The only thing that I really did not like about Raging C is um, just that race that she debuted in, which was relatively early in the Saratoga meet. It's come back, and it has not been a strong one. The horse that she ran down in their uh, Peace Cruiser, who was also a very well-meant first-time starter for Bill Mott, that horse came back um, as a heavy favorite in her next start. She did just miss in that race, um, getting beat by a nose, but her buyer regressed down to a 60, and everybody else so far who's run back out of that race, and there have been several of them, They've all just run terribly. All of their buyer speed figures have declined. None of them have been close at the end. I'm not sure how good that race was, but I do think Raging Sea ran pretty well within the context of what was um, going on um, within the running of that race. She's a, a contender in here. I would want a pretty big price if I was going to play her. Chocolate Gelato's the four. She's way the horse to beat. We sort of touched on her at the open. Let's take a look at that really impressive uh, maiden win in her most recent start back in the middle of August. Um, just took no prisoners from the start here um, after breaking towards the outside. Went right to the front in this race and just always looked well within herself, controlling things up front, um, set down very lightly at the top of the stretch by Ired Ortiz, and she just powers away from this field with a really good finish. Dominant uh, victory ridden out at the end, 92 by her. Just an awful lot to like about it. Um, and this, you know, she's by Practical Joke, who, you know, could certainly get the mile. Um, this is a Phipps female family. Um, I don't, really don't think you're supposed to worry about distance with Chocolate Gelato. And again, if she runs back to that, that win last time, and I get that she lost uh, her career debut at a very short price, that just kind of looked like maybe a race that she needed. She loomed at the top of the stretch um, outside of the eventual winner who was on the lead and who had already had a race under her belt. And then she just sort of flattened out at the end. It was mildly disappointing, uh, but she more than made amends in that last one. I think she's going to be really tough in here. The five is uh, Vatareo. This horse ships back in from Monmouth. I liked this horse's uh, career debut where she flashed good speed at over a short sp sprint distance and won you know, pretty easily at a short price. They did come to Saratoga for the grade three Schuylerville with her. She did not run that well. Um, in that race, um, she did stumble at the start there and then come over and, and bump a rival uh, pretty hard in that race. After that, she just really couldn't keep up, worked uh, really hard around the turn, could not stay with the leaders and got tired through the stretch. That wasn't a great performance. They shipped her back uh, to Monmouth for her most recent start and, and stretched her out a two-turn mile in that sorority last time. She won that race pretty easily, too. Went right to the front. Um, just, you know, held her advantage, going a little bit keenly, I thought, maybe a little bit hard to settle, but held her advantage to the stretch and then just sort of went on and wasn't finished. There wasn't a lot of closing going on in that race. Um, I thought she ran fine. It didn't make me want a better back um, in this race as they ship her to New York and try a grade one with her, but it's at least worth noting um, that she is a half-sister um, to uh, the 2020 uh, two-year-old juvenile Philly champion, uh, Vequist. Um, so this horse has pedigree. She's very uh, very well connected for a good trainer, and she has run pretty well in all three of her stores. I just didn't like her in here. The great maybe is the six, supposed to show speed in this race. Um, uh, the, these connections, Lyell Stables, they paid up for this horse after she breezed 10 flat back in March. They uh, went for, to 425000 for her. She broke from the rail in her debut, and we'll look at the stretch run of that race right now. Um, she was impressive in here. I like the way that she... Um, had the speed from the inside to just secure that position. She wasn't, you know, on an all-out send up there, but she did secure her position up on the inside, started taking that race over around the turn, and then just uh, really uh, rolled away from this field in the stretch after getting out a little bit um, off the turn in there. But I like the way that she came home in this race, a really good finish. 
82 buyer speed figure. You know, the distance going forward might be a little bit of a question for her, but I suspect she's going to be fine going the one turn mile here. And if nothing else, she looks like the kind of horse I think you want to take very seriously, at least in the short term. She looks like a very precocious uh, two-year-old, has a lot of speed, has a good outside post here, ran really well first time out. I think she's a very dangerous horse in here for, for an excellent trainer and Cherie DeVoe. The seven is your my girl. Not an easy spot for this New York bred. Um, she did debut at Saratoga against fellow state breds at the end of that meet. Um, wound, wound up going favored in there, just over two to one, and um, could not have won that race any easier. I didn't send the replay in, but you could certainly go back and look that up in your free formulator PPs that you get here with the race of the day. Um, just had three wide speed in there, in hand, um, under Joel Rosario, sitting outside the leaders. And uh, when it was time to go, Rosario just sort of shook her up a little bit through the stretch, and she just ran away from that field very quickly settling things there 75 buyer is fine as well um, she's got the pedigree to get the mile she's perfectly drawn outside you know the five to one morning line doesn't feel like the right price to me to take on her here but if she drifts off that I don't think I'd argue too hard with anybody who told me they wanted to take a shower there she was really impressive first time this is a good uh, running of the frisette here um, I think you know, you do have several different horses that you can consider in this race, especially um, after you see how the odds shake out, because I don't think you want to be taking, you know, too short of a price on anybody in here, maybe outside of the favorite. And that is where I went uh, for my top pick. And I just went with chocolate gelato. Um, as you can see there, I put her right on top. I, I just was really taken with that uh, that maiden win last time. I thought it was a nice step in the right direction. And she's supposed to be fine with this distance. I'm going to take her in here and just see, um, you know, what she can do in this race, um, even if she doesn't make the lead, which it feels like, you know, maybe it's going to be a little bit difficult for her um, to make the early lead in this race. But I put her on top anyway. I think she's going to be really tough in here. I put American Rocket second, hoping that she can just sit and make one run again. She's been a strong finisher in her first two career starts. So this is a good running um, of the Frisette, though. It's the uh, Sunday race of the day at Belmont at the Big A. It's race number eight. The approximate post time is 441 Eastern time. Good luck.